Got a nice combinatorics problem to look at today. So this comes from the AIME or the AIM in 1997. So this is the American Invitational Mathematics exam. And our goal is to find out how many ways a four by four array can be filled with plus one or minus one such that the sum of each row and each column is zero. So let's maybe lay out a four by four array first and then we'll start talking about how to count this. So we've got a four by four array and maybe the most obvious place to start is to ask how could we fill one row or one column? So let's maybe look at this first column and answer that question. So since the sum of all of the entries in this first column needs to be zero, and we're only able to use plus one and minus one, that means this must contain two ones and then two minus ones as well. So the real question is, how many ways can we fill this row so that it contains two ones and two minus ones? Well, there are a couple of ways to do this. You could maybe think about this as taking two element subsets of a four element set. So the whole set will be each of these boxes. So obviously we have four boxes and the two elements that we're gonna take out will be the places that we put the plus ones. And so how many two element subsets are there of a four element set? Well, that's exactly what binomial co coefficients are for. So there are four choose two. So that discussion tells us that there are four to choose two possibilities, but you can check that that is equal to four factorial over two factorial times two factorial, which is in fact equal to six. So far, we've seen that there are six ways to fill this first column. But now the next step gets a little bit tricky. So I think our best bet here is to fix one of those six ways, and then list out all the possibilities for column two, and then count up all of the remaining possibilities for the final two columns. So what I'll do is I will jump to having six of these boxes on the board. Okay, so I've got my six four by four grids on the board. And as our test case, we're gonna fill in this first column with one, one, minus one, minus one. So we've done that for all of the columns. And then how many ever possibilities we count up built off of this fixed first column, we can take that and multiply by six and that'll be the total number of possibilities because each other filling will come from a similar setup with whatever we put in the first column. So it turns out that we're actually free to fill the second column any way that we want as well. That's why I've made six four by four arrays here because now we wanna fill this second column in each of the six possible ways. Okay, so let's maybe do that real quick. Okay, so we got that second row filled with all of the possibilities. So notice here we have one, one, minus one, minus one. Here we have one, minus one, one, minus one, one, minus one, minus one, one, and then so on and so forth. Now we wanna look at how can we fill in the next two rows. Notice in a case like this, we actually don't have many choices. And actually we only have one choice. Because we're leading with two ones here, the only possibility is to put two minus ones here. Since we've got two ones here, we have to put two minus ones here. And likewise, this two by two square has to be filled with all positive ones. So let's fill that in real quick. We have minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, 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 one. But the really important thing here is that there is only one possibility built off of these first two rows. So now let's look at what's happening over here. So notice that in this first row, we have a one and a one, so that means we are forced to have a minus one here and a minus one here. Furthermore, down here we have a minus one and a minus one, which means we are forced to have a one here and a one here. But that leaves us some freedom with how to fill these in. 
And so how many ways can we fill that in? Well, I'll just put that that is the two by two problem and we'll work out the two by two problem on its own. Now let's move on to this one. So I wanna notice that this setup is exactly the same as this setup, just with a couple of the rows being switched. So since we have got a minus one, minus one here, we need a one, one. Since we've got a one, one there, we need a minus one and a minus one. But that leaves us with the two by two problem. It's just the two by two array is split between those boxes. Now let's look at what we've got going on right here. So we've got a one, a minus one, a one, a minus one, a minus one, a one, a minus one, and a one. But looking at this, we see that we're actually free to put any number right here, any number right here, any number right here, and any number right here. But once we have filled this third column, the fourth column will be fixed. For instance, if we put a one here, we have to put a minus one here and vice versa. And that's gonna be true for all of the remaining entries. So we're back to our original problem, which is how many two element subsets of a four element set are there? And this is just happening in the third column. So we can see that there are six possibilities for this. So if we start out with these first two columns, we have six possibilities. Okay, let's move on to the last two. And as we can see, the last two are the same as this up here. We just have some shifting in the two by two problem. We're forced to have a minus one, minus one there, a one, one there, but that tells us that the two by two problem is now on those two rows. Same thing here. We've got a minus one, a minus one, a one and a one. So we've shifted the two by two problem to there. How many total possibilities are there? Well, there's one possibility here plus six possibilities here plus four times the two by two problem possibilities for all of the leftover. Then this is only built off of this fixed first column. So that means our total will be six times all of this. Okay, great. So let's maybe bring that to the top and then we can finish it off. So in the last board, we argued that our total number of fillings will be equal to six times the quantity one plus six plus four times what we call the two by two problem, which is essentially exactly this problem, but just based on a two by two array instead of a four by four array. But what I wanna notice is that what's happening in the two by two problem is completely determined by what you put right here. Notice the only possibility for this entry is plus one or minus one. So I think we can easily put all of the possibilities like this. So we'll put plus minus one there, but that means that we must have minus or plus one here because that sum has to be zero. Likewise, we need a minus plus one here because that sum has to be zero. And this has to be plus minus one because the remaining sums have to be zero. So that tells us that there are two possibilities for this two by two problem. So that means we can insert, instead of just this kind of unknown, we can insert a two there. So that leaves us with essentially our solution. So we have six times one plus six plus four times two is eight. Okay, so let's see, that's gonna be equal to six times 15, that's what you get when you do one plus six plus eight, but then six times 15 is 90. And so the answer, how many total fillings that obey the rules described over here, there are 90. And that's a good place to stop.